my friends. Welcome to another Lisa video. Today's video is all just my own thoughts <laughs> um, being articulated into video format. So I just wanted to talk about what is natural and what we believe is ideal for the human body. <laughs> As I mentioned, this video is just my own personal thoughts. Um, you don't have to take this as solid <laughs> evidence or whatever, but this is just what I've been thinking about the last couple of days and I wanted to create a video and share my thoughts with you guys. You may agree, you may not agree, and that's all cool, but I just wanted to share in case this resonated with anybody else out there. So my thoughts are, a lot of people will say, well, it's natural, our ancestors did it, it's organic, it's vegan, it's good for you. But all of these things don't necessarily mean it's good for you. Just because we can eat something and just because there's nutrition in something doesn't mean that it's good for us. So you can get protein from animals and you can get protein from plants. It doesn't mean that animals are good for us. Maybe we should be choosing the plants just because it's natural or just because our ancestors ate it doesn't mean that it's ideal for human beings. Also, just because it's vegan or organic doesn't mean that it's good for you either. There's plenty of vegan food out there and organic food out there that isn't good for you. So we have to really take into account those things when we are deciding what we put into our bodies. Another thing that I've noticed people will say will be, oh, well, I don't feel crappy eating this stuff. And yeah, you probably won't feel crappy for a little while, but we know that these foods are not as ideal for us. So with time, you might notice symptoms of some kind. So just because you feel okay right now isn't always an indication as to that might be human food for you. Something many people tell me is that our ancestors ate certain things. We do a lot of studies based on what our ancestors ate, populations. And the thing about that is cool that we can do research and study our ancestors. It's very important to learn where we came from. But the problem is, is that we don't live like they do anymore. We live in a completely different time. There's billions of us and we live in cities. We have all these, all this modern technology. We have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Most of us are not nomadic. Most of us just stay in one spot for our whole lives. So we don't live like they did in the past. There isn't huge famines. Now, yeah, obviously there's going to be um, natural disasters and things that happen that people are taken out of their comfort situation and they have to start fending for themselves and eat things that they might not want to while they get back on their feet. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about life in general um, in the modern world where we have the choice to choose things that are not going to be as damaging to the earth. I know that there are a lot of things that we choose that are better <laughs> and worse than what we think, like buying plastic or um, you know, still buying fast food and all the garbage that gets thrown out. We have the choice. If you're able to watch this, most likely you have the ability to make better choices. And this is also just not attacking anybody based on their income levels or anything like that. The majority of people who are eating the animal products, the fast food, a lot of restaurant food and all of that kind of stuff, they are the ones that are contributing to the majority of the problems in our society. Now, when we talk about nature and what our ancestors ate, sure, they ate that kind of stuff and that is history. But that doesn't mean that we should look on them and say, this is ideal because our ancestors ate predominantly due to survival. They were looking for anything that they could get their hands on to eat. And as we moved more north, I believe that we were basically forced to eat animal products because there was nothing else to eat. There was no grocery stores. You couldn't get uh, mangoes from Mexico up in Canada. And again, I'm not saying that that is a good thing because of the transportation and all that kind of stuff. Ideally, we would all want to live closer to the equator where we could grow our own food. 
but that's not always the case and we have jobs and we live in cities and we live this different life and we cannot go back and eat the way our ancestors ate the other problem is a lot of people will say well that would be ideal if we lived that way say you lived off grid and you did your own hunting and all of that kind of stuff the problem with that is that there aren't enough wild animals to sustain that for probably even half a year when I did a little bit of research, there's only approximately 72,000 elk in Canada, but there's 37 million people. That equates to probably roughly seven to nine million families. And if each family hunted one elk a year, I mean, the math does not add up. <laughs> we don't have enough animals wild to go back to the way we were when we were our ancestors so that's a problem there and that is why we have factory farms because there is no way that we could hunt naturally being the population that we are so we have to start making different choices and it has nothing to do with our past it has nothing to do with how our ancestors ate or what's natural or organic or whatever we have to make decisions based on today the very present moment and what is going to happen in our future. We have the science to find out what is ideal food for human beings and we know that a plant-based diet has been proven to reverse heart disease. So that, to me, is a really big plus to plant-based lifestyle. I've been living a raw vegan lifestyle for over four and a half years now. I feel amazing and I don't have any health issues, so if I did ever come across any, I would figure out a way to get a supplement or whatever. And that's another thing that I wanted to talk about is that people say that supplements aren't natural. So, you know, we have to go back to the way we were or we have to eat animals to get certain things. The problem is, is that our soils are incredibly depleted. We are experiencing an insane amount of stress as a society and this depletes our bodies as well. There are so many different things in modern life that have changed that we need to supplement with. An example would be vitamin B12 and vitamin D3. B12 can be acquired by a wild vegan diet because the bacteria is found in the soils all over the earth. It's also found in feces. So back in the day when we didn't care about sanitation, <laughs> we probably got our B12 from feces. That's just how it was. We also got a lot of diseases, but we traded clean water, clean life, sterilized everything for a B12 deficiency. So taking a supplement isn't that big of a deal. Taking a supplement is in exchange for living a modern life. Vitamin D, the same thing. The more north you live, the more winter there is the less we get to see the sun. I don't get to see the sun a lot, so I do take a vitamin D supplement because where am I gonna get the vitamin D? I don't want to get it from my diet. The only vegan food source is mushrooms if they have been um, kind of sitting in the sun for a little bit, they'll pr produce a little bit of vitamin D. But why would I get my vitamin D from an animal source when I could just go directly to the source and get it from the sun? But because I live in Canada and it's a little bit hard to do most months out of the year, I would prefer to take a supplement in exchange for that. So just because it's natural to, so just because our ancestors did things the way they did doesn't mean that I should. And this is again, totally, I'm just ranting on my, now again, these are just my thoughts. This is how I believe, this is what I think is true for me. And I don't want to be part of the hurt for animals and the exploitation and any of that kind of stuff. I don't wanna have anything to do with it. I prefer to live in the modern world because that's what we're living in. We don't live in the past anymore. We have to make these choices because if we don't, our earth is in trouble. And we see that all over the news, our earth is in trouble and we have to start making these choices. And you can transition over to vegan diet, you can make better choices every day. There is nothing in meat that we need that we can't get from plants in some way, shape or form. We are an intelligent species. 
We're smart enough to be able to find alternatives and not destroy our planet, even though we are. We need to speak with our dollar. You guys are so strong with your dollar. If you are putting it towards things that you believe, then, then there will be more of those things. So I want to put my money towards vegan, whole food, raw, <laughs> obviously, because that is how I live. And I would like to see the world eating more raw foods. Whether you go full raw or high raw or whatever, it doesn't matter. I just want to see more people making better choices, growing their own food, and helping to heal this earth. So again, just my rant. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click like and subscribe to my channel to get notifications for more. You can click the little bell and they'll send the notifications directly to you whenever I post a new video. You can find all of my recipe books at this link right here. These are eBooks. Um, and you can find the link in the description below as well as links to my printed versions of all of my recipe books. They are available on Amazon. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Raw Food Romance. On Facebook, Lissa's Raw Food Romance. And on Snapchat, Lissa Raw Vegan. Until the next video, guys. <laughs> Fruit on.